السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معكم أشرف عاطف محمود أنا أستاذ مساعد قسم جراحة العظام طب طنطا المحاضرة النهاردة للأندر جرادويتس أباوت فوت ديس أوردرز خلينا نقول إن المحاضرة ديت هنتكلم فيها عن الفوت وعن مشاكلها وبالذات إن إحنا هنتكلم بالأخص في الآخر عن تلبس إكوينو فارس الفوت كلنا عارفين عبارة عن 26 بونز 33 جوينز with more than 100 muscles, tendons and ligaments and a network of blood vessels and nerves all these work to provide the body with support, balance and mobility لو قسمنا الفوت we can divide the foot into three parts and this is very important later on for diagnosis and the lines of treatment the foot can be divided into three parts The anterior part, which is called the forefoot, the middle part, which is called the midfoot, and the posterior part, which is called the rear foot or the hind foot. لو جينا نتكلم على كل واحدة, the forefoot is composed of five metatarsal bones and fourteen phalanges that make up the skeleton of the toes. The midfoot includes mainly the five tarsal bones, which are the navicular, the cuboid, and the three cuneiforms. The hind foot or the rear foot consists of the two bones which are the calcaneus and the talus. The ankle and the foot moves in many planes but the most important one is the first which is the sagittal plane. In this picture we can see the, the, the planes of movement which is the sagittal plane movements. In uh, the uh, in the right picture لأن الفوت it's down door directed which is called the plantar flexion this plantar flexion when fixed it is called equinus so equinus is fixed plantar flexion deformity on the other hand when there is excessive doors flexion of the foot in the sagittal plane and it is fixed so it's called calcaneus deformity So what is equinus deformity? It's fixed plantar flexion. What is calcaneus deformity? It is fixed dorsiflexion of the ankle joint. Arches of the foot. We have mainly three arches as we can see. Two longitudinal, one medial and one lateral, and one transverse. For more analysis of these uh, arches, the medial longitudinal arch اللي هو لونه أحمر the red highlighted بتكون from posterior to anterior by the calcaneus the talus the navicular bone the three cuneiforms and the three medial metatarsals ال lateral longitudinal arch اللي هو لونه pink ده أو ال أو ال violet ده بيتعب it's formed from posterior to anterior again by the calcaneus the cuboid and the lateral two metatarsals Finally, the transverse arch is formed mainly by the navicular, the cuboid, the three cuneiforms, and the five metatarsals. All these arches are maintained by many muscles and ligaments, but the most important is the long plantar ligament. The long plantar ligament is fixed posteriorly to the calcaneus and anteriorly to the metatarsals. And its tension is very important to maintain the arch of the foot by the arches longitudinal and the medial arches and the, and the middle arches. Accordingly, we can go for the pathology according to the arches. If the arch is normal, so it's in the middle side. In some cases, there is increased arch, so we call it biscavus. Bis is the Latin term of the the Latin term of Uh, the uh, foot cavus is increased arch so what is base cavus it's increased arch of the foot on the other hand when the foot is flattened flat arch flat foot it's called bis planus planus is flattening of the bis which is the foot we can talk about the base cavus base cavus is high arched foot which does not flatten with weight bearing. The deformed can be in the forefoot, midfoot or hindfoot. As we mentioned before, the foot is divided into three parts. 
and it can be in combination and localization of the site of the deformity is very important so we can attack the uh, pathology by surgery or by medication or by physiotherapy this is an example of high arched foot here in the x-ray we can see that the site of the increased arch is posteriorly in the hind foot in the calcaneus on the above picture we can see that the calcaneus is in varus medial deviation and this is very common in the cavus that the foot goes into varus and sometimes it's called cavu varus foot cavu varus foot etiology of increased arch cavus in 80 percent it's secondary to club foot neuromuscular disorders as polio uh, malunited fractures burns and in 20 percent of cases it's idiopathic with no clear cause this is an ancient picture of a, a man with polio of the right side we can see that the, the limb is a uh, hypo hypo uh, 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 it's weak limb and we can see that there is high arched foot with deformity in equinus he has equinus deformity and increased arch cavus equinus deformity which is fixed blunter flexion of the foot management are mainly orthotics for mild and non-progressive deformity lateral foot and height foot boosting large to box shoes surgically Management can be surgically, either treat the underlying problem, and many cases we need to make plantar release. It's very common. And sometimes in combination of procedures, which is soft tissue procedures and bony procedures. In general, in the foot deformity, we can talk about the management in mainly three planes. First, the non-surgical or conservative treatment, either videotherapy or orthotics. Secondary, the surgical, and the surgical are divided into two parts, either soft tissue procedures in the form of tendon release or ligament release or tendon transfer, and bony procedures either by osteotomies or arthrodesis. This is the osteotomy. We remove a wedge to correct the deformed foot. In rigid cases, in some cases we make retrieval arthrodesis what is retrieval arthrodesis we will talk it about later on retrieval arthrodesis is arthrodesis of three the main three joints of the foot and we will talk it uh, about it later on now we will talk about base planus what is base planus it is flat foot decreased arch the middle arch foot collapse and the middle side of foot nearly touch the ground and there is usually vulgus heel. Bisplanus is the commonly called flat foot and many children are born by flat foot. Uh, Bisplanus can be divided into two types, flexible type which is common or fixed type or rigid type which is somewhat uh, less common. How we can differentiate by this technique? By elevating the big toe, we stretch the ligament, the plantar ligament or the plantar fascia, so the arch will regain. If the arch regain by this way, so it is flexible. If it didn't regain, so it is fixed deformity. We can make this either manually by the fingers, we elevate the toe, or by asking the patient to get tip two. Tip 2, by tip 2, we make a dorsal flexion of the big toe, so stretching the arch, so we can see if there is regain of the arch or not. This is the osteotomy. We remove a, a wedge to correct the deformed foot. The midfoot includes mainly the five tarsal points, which are the navicular, the cuboid, and the three cuneiforms. 
treatment again as we said treatment of any food deformity we can divide it in, into first conservative secondary surgical and surgical are either soft tissue procedures or bony procedures this statement is very common and it's very important in treatment of flexible flat foot uh, which is conservative treatment we can say that any procedure for the correction of flexible bis planus should be done for disabling pain after exhausting every means of conservative measurement so the treatment is conservative 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 then we start to see other procedures if it is not effective surgical treatment bony either subtalar gris extra articular arthrodesis and we'll, we'll talk about it subtalar arthrodesis or subtalar or triple arthrodesis in gris subtalar arthrodesis we st we, uh, we try to avoid the uh, uh, growth as possible as we can by making just denuding of the articular surface of the joint and putting a graft from the iliac crest of the fibula so by this method we block the joint in the correct condition with the fixation of the joint without affecting the growth blade so the foot will not get smaller السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته آه معكم أشرف عاطف محمود أنا أستاذ مساعد قسم جراحة العظام طب طنطا المحاضرة النهاردة للأندر جرادويتس أباوت فوت ديس أوردرز خلينا نقول إن المحاضرة ديت هنتكلم فيها عن الفوت وعن مشاكلها وبالذات إن إحنا هنتكلم بالأخص في الآخر عن تلبس إكوينو فارس أوف كورس أورثوديز Best planners can be subdivided into flexible and fixed. We talked about flexible. Now we will talk about the fixed deformity. Two common types of the fixed uh, best planners. The first is the conjugated vertical talus, and the second is the tarsal coalition, and we will talk about. Fixed deformity either congenital vertical talus is congenital condition in which the talus is vertically aligned and can be felt at the bottom of the feet and the under of the feet. Treatment either mobilization and casting and uh, there is a, a debate about its effect or operative. At first we can make extensive soft tissue release around the talus to get it aligned with, uh, within the joint and get a uh, aligned foot. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ma'akum Ashraf Atif Mahmoud. I'm a student of the Qism Grahat Al-Azam of Tibb Tanta. The presentation today for the undergraduates about foot. Now we come for the most important issue that we see very much is the, which is the talibus equinovarus what is talibus equinovarus it's congenital disorder affecting the foot uh, leading to this deformity when analyzing the name talibus equinovarus bis as we said before is the foot tali is talus so deformity is the foot at the level of the talus Equino is fixed equinus deformity, which is plantar flexion. Varus, the heel is in varus. The midfoot includes mainly the five tarsal points, which are the navicular, the cuboid, and the three cuneiforms. Again, this is the picture. We can see the deformities. There is fixed equinus deformity of the calcaneus. We can see there is cavus. We can see that there is a virus of the heel. Another picture showing again the deformities. 
there is equinus which is fixed plantar flexion at the level of the ankle there is virus of the heel at the level of the subtalar joint forget about the subination we have adduction at the level of the mid tarsal joint and of course the cavus deformity the incidence of times equino virus is about one over every 1000 live births males are more common than the females and usually the condition becomes bilateral in 50% of the cases causes the main cause is neuropathic is idiopathic 90% of cases of unknown cause the second is muscular which is the arthrogryposis multiplex congenita and we will talk about it uh, now uh, also there may be osseous as part of absence of the tibia hemimelia and sometimes as a, 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 a secondary to neurological disorders as the spina bifida. Diagnosis, how to diagnose? We should make a general examination to exclude the spina bifida, to exclude the arthrogryposis multiplex congenita and to exclude if there is any other femoral disorder, bony disorders, either proximal femoral deficiency, tibial deficiency and so on. Arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. This is the picture of children with arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. What is arthrogryposis multiplex congenita? It's a condition in which all the muscles of the body are exchanged by fibrous tissues. So the child has no muscles. All are fibrous tissue. It is called a rest of formation of the muscles at the level of the fibroblast stage. If we go to the embryological studies, the uh, muscle is formed first by the muscle cells, followed by the stem cells, followed by fibrous blasts, followed by myoblasts, and finally the myocytes. In these children, the pathology is present at the exchange between the fibroblast and the myoblast, so all the muscles are fibrotic, and the patient comes completely stiff. Uh, and he will be lucky if all, if not all the joints are affected. Sometimes the hand is free as the picture above and on the lower limbs. And you can see the, uh, the picture above to the lateral with this uh, red dressing. We can see the child is completely stiff like a wood. And this is usually uh, um, uh, formed by, uh, uh, co caused, and this usually causes uh, club foot causes DTH, developmental dysplasia of the hip, and causes stiffness of the shoulders and the ankles. Diagnosis, again, of the club foot. The characteristic deformity, again, hind foot is equinus at the level of the ankle, varus, subtalar joint. There is deformity of the forefoot in the form of adduction at the mid-tarsal joint, so by nation of the forefoot and cephas at the level of the forefoot again. Okay, radiologically, it's important to know that there is called the telecalcanian angle in the AB and the lateral view. Uh, the long axis of the talus and the calcaneus should make about 20 degrees angle. If things angle decreased to zero, so it is uh, club foot or equinus deformity. Causes the main cause. Two common types of the fixed uh, bisplanus. The first is arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. This is the picture of children with arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. What is arthrogryposis multiplex congenita? Treatment of club foot. The goal of treatment of club foot is to obtain a blunt grade food that is functional, painless, and stable. And as we and as we have said before. The treatment of club foot is conservative and operative as any management. Conservative by repeated manipulation and casting, operative either soft tissue operation or bony operations. Conservative is the Bonsetti technique. It is the initial treatment of most club feet by repeated manipulation and casting, which should begin as early as possible. This may be accompanied by minimal surgical procedures as percutaneous Achilles tenotomy. We make it percutaneous under light anesthesia to make complete tenotomy of the... Uh, the manipulation is called the Bonsetti technique. We should avoid false correction, maintain the correction and follow up to watch any recurrence. These are the series of casting from the left to the right and we do not make the correction completely we make it gradual from distal to proximal 
So if we ha as we have said in the deformity from proximal to distal, we have equinus of the ankle, we have varus of the subtalar, we have adduction of the mid tarsals, and we have cavus of the mid tarsal. So we will correct, we'll correct it from distal to proximal. First, the first cast is to correct the cavus. The second and third cast is to correct the um, uh, adduction of the forefoot. And the fifth cast is to correct the uh, varus of the heel. And finally, we correct the equinus uh, foot, the tight tendon keys. Uh, each cast takes about uh, one to two weeks. And sometimes we need to repeat the cast if the correction of the needed, uh, if the needed correction is incomplete and we make it again. And finally, usually after correction of all the components, the components of the equinus deformity is still rigid because of the tightened Achilles. And we cannot correct, over correct it because of this tightness. So we make under light anesthesia, percutaneous tenotomy of the tendon, complete cut. And surprisingly, after three months, the tendon regenerates again in the normal tightness. Okay, radiologically. It's important to know that there is called the telecalcanian angle in the AB and the lateral view. Uh, the long axis of the talus and the calcaneus should make. After correction, we put a prosthesis called the tennis brown. What is this brown? It's two feet correcting the foot of the club foot, maintain the correction, and we put a bar between the two bars to keep it in external rotation to avoid the internal rotation components. It is Weird full time for two months, the night only for two years. We should avoid this deformity, which is rocker, which is called the rocker bottom. And some doctors start to correct the equinus deformity ac acutely and severely uh, with no correction of the tendon Achilles. This leads to the rocker bottom deformity. What is the rocker bottom? It's the bottom of the chair, like a rocker. When there is overcorrection, it's false correction at the level of the mid tarsal, keeping the foot, the hind foot in equinus, and only correction of the foot, leading to this painful deformity. We should avoid it as possible as we can. Surgical treatment of club foot or surgical treatment of talibus equinovarus indications: late presentation after six months of age. Um, complementary to conservative treatment after incomplete correction and if there is completely failure of conservative treatment. This is the osteotomy. We remove a, a wedge to correct the deformed foot. Bony operations, usually uncombined with soft tissue operations, not alone. Types of bony, either osteotomy to correct the foot deformity or internal tibia torsion. Sometimes we need to make telectomy, especially in case of arthrogyposis with severe deformity. And then sometimes we make arthrodesis, and this is usually after bone maturity uh, on a severe, uh, several joints. We make arthrodesis of several joints, which is called the triple arthrodesis. Osteotomy, doyer osteotomy, we make acute correction, uh, age of four years and up, not before the four years. Uh, and it corrects the persistent varus heel. We should avoid this deformity, which is rocker, which is called the rocker bottom. And some doctors start to correct the equinus deformity ac acutely and severely uh, with no correction of the tendon Achilles. This leads to the rocker bottom deformity. What is the rocker bottom? It's the treatment. Again, as we said, treatment of any foot deformity, we can divide it in into first conservative, secondary surgical, and surgical are either soft tissue procedures or bony procedures. This is the osteotomy. We remove a, a wedge to correct the deformed foot.
Bony operations usually accompanied with soft tissue operations, not alone. Types of bony, either osteotomy to correct the foot deformity or internal table torsion. Thank you very much. I hope that from this lecture we understand it. What is the meaning? What's the meaning of equinus deformity? What is the meaning of the calcaneus deformity? What is subtalar gris arthrodesis? What is arthrodesis? What is the club foot? What are the components of club foot deformity? And what is the Bonsetti technique? Thank you for your attention.